What's going on guys? Clint and Matt here. What's up? Guys, we're with Classic Firearms, obviously, and uh, I say obviously because we're wearing all the stuff here on our channel. Makes sense, right? Anyway, we're here for an unboxing. What we've got here are some Yugos. Well, not the car, but rifles, right? Rifles, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Cool. We're not in the car business. No, no, well, not yet, anyway. All right, hey, let's go ahead and open this guy up. And show you guys some classics that we have here. And uh, Yugo 24s, 47s? 24 47s, that's right. 24-47s, perfect. Matt, what can you tell me about these things, man? Well, so these are a Mauser design, um, eight millimeter, yeah. just like a standard German Mauser. But interestingly, they did shorten the receiver, so its action is a little bit shorter. Um, these are a little bit earlier of a design of, of Mauser when it comes to uh, you know, the ones you think of coming around World War II. Right. So you'll notice that distinctly they do have that straight bolt handle. Uh, cool later, bit, yeah. uh, Serbia or Yugoslavia does switch to a bent bolt handle, but these ones will have straight bolt handles. Other than that, I mean, it's basically a Mauser. You know, five yeah. round bolt action, that strong Mauser design. Uh, you know, you see, uh, you know, just that very familiar how all Mausers pretty much work. One thing I thought was really cool about this rifle, the first one you pick up, already got some trench art on it. That's right, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what this guy was going for here, but uh, whatever it was, I'll be honest, he wasn't much of an artist, <laughs> but I think it's still very cool. On the other side, you can see a little bit more detail on it, and I don't know what all is happening here. Well, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, any kind of military combat uh, firearm will have been, you know, possibly uh, decorated by soldiers in the trenches, they don't have right. much to do sometimes, yep. and uh, they get personalized. Uh, I love that Yugoslavian crest. Yeah, that crest so, is real cool. You know, this is the uh, the classic Yugo crest. Uh, you know, you see it on a bunch of farms from like the Togarevs to Mauser rifles, right. and uh, it's it's a very distinctive look. Yeah, this one also got obviously the crest on it. Really good looking. Wood's got a lot of character on this one here. Just the wood naturally. Uh, which I always like. 2447 right on the side, and then your uh, letters. <laughs> so yeah, very cool rifles. What caliber are these? Eight millimeter Mauser. Eight millimeter, cool. Very cool. Now, this rifle is a little bit different. Um, so included amongst the 2447 group of rifles we got in are uh, also another slight variant, which is the uh, 2452. Yeah. So if you want to take a look at that, right there below the crest, you'll see it's marked 2452. It's just a slightly different, more upgraded uh, model of the 2447 gotcha. on their way to adopting the M48. But again, you got that nice Yugo crest. Uh, you know, here you have the Produzia 44, which is like factory 44. Right. Right there. And uh, and so yeah, you know, this is an interesting variation. It's possible that if you place an order for this 2447 SKU, you may get one marked 2452. Very cool. There you go. Slightly different variant on the crest, it looks like on this guy here. Yeah, you know, the Yuga Crest did change over time. The number of torches is uh, one thing that definitely changed. Uh, so you can actually kind of tell what year range by the number of torches that appear on the that's, crest in the fire. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I always love that type of history to these. That's always really neat. And of course, these are CNR eligible. So for those of you out there who have a CNR license, we can ship this to you on your license. Um, and you know, who doesn't want to have a classic eight millimeter Mauser right. you know, uh, part of your collection? Whether you're collecting Mausers or World War II, or you just, you're gonna get into something that's a little cheaper than an original German K98. Yeah. Um, now some of these, you know, there are wear on the markings. This one, for instance, you can see that crest is still there, but especially down here toward the bottom, it's starting to get pretty worn. So, you know, cosmetically sometimes, you know, you do have to look at that because these are used surplus rifles. They've right. gone through a bunch of stuff, but I would say so far the stocks have looked pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that one right there, even though it looks like the bluing is mostly worn on this guy, but that crest is crisp. Oh my goodness, the detail on that you can see very clearly. Nice looking rifle. Um, of course, we want to go through some of our standard uh, caveats. Uh, yeah. So you can notice that most of these rifles are going to be missing their sight hoods. Uh, we're not considering incomplete for that. Uh, almost all the rifles will be missing a cleaning rod. We're not going to consider it complete for that. Uh, slings are something we won't guarantee because yeah. it's just, it either has it or it doesn't. Right, I mean, it, it's surplus, guys. As you guys know, hey, whatever, whoever may have had this may have done their own type of thing, which also includes trench art, things along those lines. And so some of them do, some of them don't, some of them will, some of them won't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, minor cracks, especially kind of up here in the front end of the stock, as long as it's still, you know, a, a, a stock that's serviceable, right. you know, you're, you can safely fire it. That's not going to be considered something that uh, we deduct for. But you will have a rifle that's got a good serviceable action. Everything should be mechanically complete. And uh, I just noticed, you know, this uh, this crest looks a little different. It's like smaller than most yeah. of the crests that we've seen. So again, those little variations over time. Yeah. There you go. Yep. 
But yeah, you'll see those differences, those variances. Which is all really cool still. And some of the, I mean, all of these that I felt so far too. That's that's a sweet action. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mausers yeah. are renowned for yeah. the, the strength of their action and, and the slipness of it. Yeah. Some of these, I mean, you can kind of almost hear this if we're quiet. Like, it's just kind of a little gummed up. It can yeah. use a little cleaning, but it still operates just fine. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is that is nice. I definitely, I like that a whole lot. I want one. <laughs> well, and, and you can have one. Like, I mean, that's yeah. the great thing. You know, these are fantastic historical arms that, yeah. you know, they, they have a story to tell, and it can be part of, of your story if you oh, want. Oh, yeah, absolutely, guys. I just want to see if there's anything different on the bottom or on the other couple layers. Like that one there, check the grain out and, and that guy. We'll talk about a different looking crest too. It's a little bit different crest, but that, that is a beautiful looking stock. Yeah. Yeah, I like the grain on that one a whole lot. Looks like the bluing is a uh, pretty good looking in this one too. And it also has the, uh, the side, hood. side hood, yeah. Minor crack right up front though, but that doesn't look like it would be unsafe or, you know, function inhibiting in any kind of way. I think this one might be my favorite, honestly. I like this a whole lot. All right, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, so have you ever, you've got to have shot a bunch of eight millimeters by now. Uh, yeah, I've shot a few eight millimeter, eight millimeters. How do you, what do you think about that cartridge? I like it. I mean, you definitely know you're uh, shooting an eight millimeter. You, you like, definitely you know you're shooting like, a gun, right? Oh, you definitely know you're shooting a gun, right? So eight millimeter cartridge definitely has some knockdown power to it. Uh, I'm not, all that sure about its accuracy though. I've never really taken one out to distance. Mm -hmm. I think the most I've done is maybe a hundred yards. Oh, wow. um, uh, and I mean, it, it's it, a chip it, shot for that. Really. Oh yeah. So it's <laughs> like, Hey, I can't speak personally on behalf of that, but as far as, you know, shooting it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, it makes a great hunting round. makes a great, if you are going to shoot to distance, you know, you can shoot eight millimeter probably easily out to mm, yeah. 1200 or farther. Right. Yeah. Good looking stuff, man. Yeah. So grab these last couple off this top layer. And yeah, let's that. Show, those, show those some too. All right. Throw that over there. Throw that over there. So I know we didn't guarantee uh, slings or the condition of the slings, but yeah. I mean, it looks like you got a good chance. Yeah, getting there's quite a few that we're seeing so far, at least from these guys. And uh, don't forget, folks, we will have our hand select option. So if yeah. you would like us to search for 10 uh, and get the best one out of that group, that's definitely an option that'll be available. Yeah, for sure. Check that guy out there too. So this one here, you'll notice the crest is a little bit more faded. And again, that's just gonna be one of the variances that we're probably gonna see in some of these rifles because of wear over time, things like that. Yep. Um, another note, I guess, uh, this one actually looks like it's completely missing, that uh, that crest. It looks oh, like it's completely yeah. worn off. So for instance, that would definitely be one that we'd probably try to skip over on a hand select. But right, yeah. um, just keep in mind that you know that is still a, a possibility, although it's the only one I've seen so far yeah. with that much wear there. Looking at this one, looks like this one was actually reblued at one point, maybe an arsenal refinish or something, because I mean, other than right at the muzzle, everything else about this one looks really good. Other than some dust built up. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're definitely dirty, they're gonna need yeah. some love, guys, some cleaning. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean my hands are definitely showing that a little bit. So there's that. <laughs> That's okay. That's one thing that's great about this job is getting a little dirty, right? That's right. I mean, one of the great things about collecting historical firearms, you can get to take them apart, clean them, get yeah. to know them on the inside and out. Right. I mean, this one I like. You know, again, like you said, not a lot of bluing, but it's just, you know, the stamping is super crisp and clean. Oh, yeah. That looks awesome. Yeah. So I really like that, you know, the level of detail you can see there. Let's take a look at that one there. Oh. Yeah, that's another good looking guy. But yeah, guys, I think we've got ourselves quite a cool looking collection of, again, historic firearms. So yeah, let's get uh, one last look in the, in the uh, gondola here. Get that pan over if Ryan can, if you can get that pan over all these guys so you can pretty much see what to expect whenever you make your order or go ahead and complete your purchase from one of these guys. Look at that one though. Look at that wood this on one that one. guy, that grain there. I changed my mind. That one's that one's looking like my favorite now. That one also has the uh the front hood. hood. Yeah. I kinda like this uh this brown, one. Yeah, this yeah. nice lighter brown stock. Yeah, that's pretty. 
So, you know, again, just goes to show some of the variations naturally going to occur yeah. in wood. You know, Dude, surplus, man. Every time we do these unboxing, what is it like? It's, it's like Christmas. I had lots of chocolates. It's like Christmas. <laughs> Christmas chocolates. Christmas chocolates. That's my. That's now my name for our unboxing. It's a Christmas chocolate it's time. Christmas chocolate. Yeah. All right, guys, I think we'll wrap it up there. I guess you guys get the gist of this and all of these M2447s. Mm -hmm. You go M2447s. Right. And uh, yeah, let's do that. So guys, it may not be out just yet, our next giveaway. But uh, I'll give you a hint. It's a SCAR 20S. <laughs> uh, so when it goes live, go get those entries because it is sweet. And congratulations to our winner of the HK SP5 with the binary, binary trigger, trigger. Yeah. the brace, and it's an HK SP5. So. You're welcome, because <laughs> we love you. No. So guys, go get your entries on the 20S when it goes live, if it's not already. And guys, as always, we appreciate your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.